afternoon, everyone. I would like to thank all our speakers, Omar Akar from Huawei, Haysam from Iparaj from STC, George Jabber from ITC, Annette Gutter from Colt, and uh, Hatem Matraf from Tisalat, who will, they will join us soon. We have some network issue due to the global the issue of uh, of uh, Google, I guess. Uh, I don't know what how it affects the Zoom uh, network. Uh, today, uh, we are talking about the role of cloud in accelerating the business digital transformation. So this has become very hot topic, especially this year during the pandemic, the use of the data, working from home, uh, all the virtual uh, life we are living and our business, how we support the business, okay, which combination of uh, personal and private, uh, all using the network, okay, and uh, using the cloud, using uh, the important cloud of our life, so you can be connected wherever you are and you can reach your data anywhere in the world. So now I start by our first question. Where do cloud technologies fit in digital transformation strategies, especially when it comes to business growth? I will start by, uh, Haysam Farage, please, uh, if you can take this question, uh, Haysam. Yeah, uh, first of all, thank you, Tony, and uh, it's a pleasure to join the my colleagues in this session and thanks for the invites. So uh, when we talk about the cloud, and I think um, the cloud strategy sit as a, as, as a core element uh, in any organization digital transformation plan, uh, the success and failure or uh, failures of organization will have uh, strong dependencies on the, on the effective, I would say, use of technology and the service delivery um, practices at large within within either IT or um, network. And uh, due to the characteristics that the cloud provide uh, to, 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 to different organizations and, and business users will have definitely uh, a positive impact as it has proven in the past due to the fact that uh, the cloud provide a much more efficient um, uh, uh, you know, uh, methodology and approach on extending services and uh, capabilities to end uh, to 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 uh, business users. So when we speak about business ambitions around time to market, uh, it, I mean, uh, uh, customer experience, uh, transforming organization to be data driven, and uh, innovation in product and services, definitely the cloud uh, plays a major role in. Um, in providing those uh, capabilities. So we can easily Tony, link those capabilities that, 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 that the cloud you know, uh, architecture can provide uh, to end users and business really to, uh, to uh, accelerate business performance uh, from a, from a, from a go-to-market perspective and product development perspective, and also to provide effectiveness, effectiveness and efficiency into the way the business uh, runs. Oh, thank you, Haysam. Uh, Omar, from point of view as vendor, okay, and especially you're, uh, you're providing a lot of uh, cloud uh, services, whether to public or to private company, can you also give us a, uh, an answer of this question? Definitely, Tony. First of all, good evening to you and to all the valued panelists and, of course, to the participants in this, in this panel. So, um, uh, in brief, Tony, we strongly believe that cloud is the underlying distributed computing platforms uh, that, that basically provides enterprises with choice of deployment, hence enabling them to run any application scenario anywhere at any point in time. In fact, cloud is the rock solid foundation of the digital transformation strategy. On top of which digital technologies uh, such as artificial intelligence, machine learning and analytics are coupled together to enable the organization plasticity, if, if, uh, if I would say. Uh, cloud today supports organizations to generate new revenue streams by delivering next generation industry specific services out of the box and can enable organizations also to maintain their leadership position in their relevant industry by enabling what we call the hyper automation of both IT and business services in order to improve the time to market and reduce operational costs. 
uh, if I would give you as a vendor and in Huawei in specific, Huawei Cloud, for example, today is delivering more than 210 plus digital services running on uh, uh, the public cloud nodes that we have across the globe with a choice of deployment also ranging from public to core on-prem to intelligent edge, hence accelerating the digital transformation of various industries. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Omar. Uh, now, uh, George, do you want to elaborate about this uh, topic as well? So we'll have time also because Anat and uh, Hafiz have yes. to. In my uh, first good evening again, everyone, good afternoon. Uh, yes, uh, as my colleagues mentioned, uh, as you know, digital uh, transformation is about uh, customer understanding, customer journey, uh, is about uh, putting specific metrics, uh, about improving the digital uh, quotient, in a, as we say, in a company like the term that McKenzie uh, devised. Basically, all this cannot be done except with the technology alignment. As, uh, my colleague, as my colleagues mentioned, I mean, the foundation of, uh, of the digital transformation is the cloud, is about data architecture, it's about IT, it's about devices, big data analytics, it's about also security and connectivity, the digitization of the channels of the supply chains, and all this can only be done through a cloud, a cloud that is available, that is flexible, cost effective, secure, and that has also the additional services for artificial intelligence, machine learning. And this is our objective as service providers, us and of course our colleagues and the other operators in the region and globally is to provide also this customer experience and these tools and this complete ecosystem of digital transformation through the cloud and through the uh, access technologies to our B2B uh, and government customers. Okay, thank you, George. Uh... Now, what are the criteria that enable the cloud to accelerate digital transformation, Omar? If we want well, to take Tony, criteria one by Tony, one. Tony, this is, uh, yeah, probably this is a, a very important question. So allow me some time here, because I we strongly believe that there are key KPIs that the cloud must take to accelerate the digital transformation. So to start with, uh, cloud should be location independent, enabling anywhere operation and also giving customers choice of deployment. So if you take the edge as an example, giving customers choice to deploy IoT and AI application scenarios at the edge is, is very important, for example, nowadays. In fact, statistics show that by 2025, over 40% of the next generation applications were run outside the data center on, for example, an intelligent edge platform. Therefore, having the choice of deployment with the edge to on-prem to public uh, should be the deployment choices while maintaining unified user experience. So that's one aspect. The other aspect is cloud should enable the hyper automation. It is not only about automating IT services, but most importantly, business services by capitalizing on AI, machine learning, event-driven software, robotic process automation, and even other types of uh, what is so-called the decision process and task automation tools. And um, third, a very important aspect here, Tony, is delivering next generation industry specific digital services. We're not talking anymore about conventional clouds that are delivering IaaS and PaaS. We're talking about the ability to deliver a horizontal digital okay. platform with application enablement framework for automated development, deployment, orchestration, and integration of applications. This becomes your next generation DevOps platform. The AI framework to provide developers with full suite of AI technologies to accelerate and simplify the development of AI application models from creation to training to inference and delivery. And finally, enabling uh, what is so-called the internet of behavior by basically capturing the digital dust of the customer's lives from various sources through enterprise analytics capabilities and customizing the services based on the insight, uh, uh, which will help organizations offer much more competitive services. So that's in a nutshell, the key criteria that the cloud must take to accelerate digital transformation. Thank you, Ahmad. 
uh, happen? What are the criteria that enable the cloud to accelerate digital transformation? Yeah, sorry, uh, Tony, could you say that again, the question, please? Okay. What are the criteria that enable the cloud to accelerate digital transformation? Okay. From um, point of view of telecom operator, because different than... Uh, yeah, absolutely, standard. absolutely. You know, digital transformation uh, as a topic, it's a, it's a very uh, important, of course, uh, strategic uh, direction for so many of, of the telecommunication. And in order to accelerate the digital transformation, there are a number of things that you have to be ready and, and prepared uh, for. Uh, one, of course, part of it is the cloud uh, uh, infrastructure that you use, whether uh, the cloud is being used in your IT environment and your customer, for example, uh, uh, BSS, you know, your, your business support functions, your operation functions, uh, or the network part. Uh, we are now seeing a lot of uh, um, a lot of moves from uh, uh, the industry towards being uh, a network that sits on the cloud. And what does this mean? It means a lot of things uh, for us. It means, of course, in addition to flexibility and agility and quick time to market and et cetera, in addition to those values, because this is what basically the cloud will, will bring. And this is how it will accelerate uh, the digital transformation journey of uh, service providers. But in addition to that also, um, the cost and the efficiency, we believe that cloud will bring also efficiency, uh, uh, will bring, uh, uh, somehow will save cost in terms of uh, uh, operation. So you asked Donnie now, what is the criteria? How do we accelerate this uh, uh, the, the cloud deployment and cloud enablement. I think one big part of it would be um, uh, the, the technology itself, the cloud from a technology, from a standardization, from the level of suppliers and the, the, um, the ecosystem around the uh, procurement and supply chain, I think it's, it's, uh, it's, it's mature enough uh, so, so this is this is uh, something that it's already available. I think that what do we need as companies and as end users is that we need to have the right culture in place uh, in order to deploy. Uh, we need to have uh, some sorts of uh, accepting taking risk. Uh, uh, and a lot of time when you discuss, you know, moving towards cloud solution. Uh, you are faced with difficulties of some uh, people and some challenges, some culture really that people, they tend to prefer to go to the legacy because this is all what, what they want and they are comfortable to continue working on a legacy uh, infrastructure. Regulation, don't forget about regulation. It's also accelerate the deployment of the cloud. And what I mean that the, the, the policy makers could encourage or could sometimes, kill. Sometimes accelerate, cloud. sometimes it didn't accelerate. It depends Absolutely. On how, how Absolutely, this is, this is exactly what I'm saying. And, and the regulator will policy makers, if they set the right rules, they could encourage and they could accelerate the entire industry and the entire market to move. But it also could backfire uh, on, on you. So you should have the right, of course, so it's a number of things, yani, uh, I believe that from a technology, from, as I said, supply chain, the ecosystem around the suppliers, the vendors, the technology, I think it's, it's, it's pretty much mature, uh, especially in the IT landscape. In the network, we are seeing a lot of network functions now are moving towards the cloud. And some actually of the service providers have actually partnered with some of the hyperscalers in order to move some of the functionality towards the the, the cloud, so so this is in a nutshell my okay. my uh, take. Thank you, thank you, Hazem. I would like to welcome Annette again with us. It is the problem. The problem is in, in Europe is more severe than our region. 
because I, it looks like it okay. looks like Anna, the question again for you what are the criteria that enable the cloud to accelerate digital transformation let's make it quick so we can go to the other question please yeah, I want to pick on what Hartem said earlier, you know, the criteria is um, mainly also around security and feeling, perception, cultural transformation. Um, what do I mean by it? Um, we saw that as, as a result of the first wave of the pandemic that we, um, a lot of our clients ask for a cloud or voice, a cloud-based voice solution. There was a significant uptake. And why? Because of the home page, you know, we talk via Zoom, which works and sometimes doesn't work. And um, given the positive experience our clients gathered during the voice solution or the experience with the cloud-based voice solutions, we see now that the reluctance to accept also data services being hosted in the cloud is uh, reduced step by step. This is an important area because the feeling of security, it's not about only the data being in the cloud being secure, but also that there are secure ways how to get to the, uh, the cloud. And this is an important aspect, I believe, which will accelerate also uh, cloud adoption. That all of us here around the table, we solve the security concerns and also, as uh, Hartem said, the cultural transformation, the change of the mindset, which has an impact on the processes in any of the client organizations on how they run their business, that you don't need to have it on prem, but you can have sometimes even a much better performance if you have it in the cloud, if you have your applications in the cloud. Thank you, Annette. We'll go to the question. How do you see cloud adoption in a region, Haitham? Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, when we speak about the region, I think um, there are a lot of accelerations when it comes for uh, adopting a cloud architecture, especially for telecom operators. And speaking about STC, uh, we started that journey back in 2017 when we uh, built our decoupled uh, cloud environments uh, and we were able to uh, build our strategy really to, to, to migrate our existing telecom um, network functions into the cloud, we'll be able today to, uh, to, around six, to have around 60% of our uh, network functions already migrated in the cloud and um, with a lots of uh, I would say uh, positioning and capability around SDN and AVs that we have it in place. And uh, as a result of that strategy, we're able, I would say that uh, we, we reach around 30% uh, of, 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 uh, of uh, efficiency. And, and there was a massive reduction of our time to market in the way that we uh, produce uh, network functions on the cloud compared to the legacy uh, way in the past. And this, as a matter of fact, also have helped uh, really to uh, mitigate lots of the security uh, issues that we have in the past and have helped as well really to achieve lots of resilience and stability to the environments that we, um, that we have deployed uh, on the cloud. So I believe that I'm sure that majority of the operators are, are within that, um, that, uh, that trend. Uh, and I think uh, with the introduction of 5G and, and the, the new services and products being projected in the future, the, 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 probably the, the, the trend that probably Amr have talked about, edge computing and other aspects will come into the place. But I think I'd give the, what I have spoke about in terms of represent our uh, you know, fundamental building blocks to make sure that our core engine as a, as a telecom provider runs in a much more efficient and effective manner to 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 be to stand competitive our core offering and to be ready to really to innovate uh, uh, for the future services thank you Haitan. annette if you can tell us also about the mm -hmm. europe uh, how do you see the cloud adoption in europe in, in your region so we yeah. can look for the change at least yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a pleasure, Tony. I mentioned earlier the first experiences with voice-based uh, solutions hosted in the cloud, creating a pool for our clients. Um, there is also another significant aspect, which is um, the um, pull effect from some of the mandatory software upgrades in applications. For instance, 
uh, the move from SAP now to SAP for HANA as a cloud-based system. And you might have noticed um, that uh, SAP themselves, they have uh, strongly recommended to migrate the workloads into the cloud. And this is uh, a significant aspect, at least in Europe, driving cloud adoption and that there are more applications which are being hosted in the cloud. Unfortunately, I missed uh, what uh, Omar said earlier around uh, the edge use cases in 5G. And here we see that there is an interest in Europe, but I believe we all would agree that the real killer use case we are still trying to identify. Yes, we talk about latency sensitive um, applications, um, which um, create a balance between the workload, what needs to be done locally and what uh, is to be done in the cloud. Um, but uh, having said that, we do not see that those applications already create a demand and increased in demand for cloud. But predominantly yeah. to summarize, it's those migrations like SAP for HANA which drive the demand here in Europe. Thank you, Annette. Uh, now we have two questions, in fact, from, uh, let me address the question. We have a question from Ahmed Farouk to Hatem. Would you trust to put a network core on a cloud? Hatem, is to you to answer. Okay, I was on mute, sorry. So uh, this is a very interesting, uh, uh, interesting question. I know. Because <laughs> and we kind of have a lot of uh, right. debate and, <laughs> and different opinions, I mean, to, be, to be honest. If you ask me now as a CTO, I will be a bit reluctant I mean, to put the complete network over a, a public cloud uh, with, with the uh, hyperscalers. If it was a private cloud that that we own and that we manage yes of course that's that's actually our strategy and our direction and and this is the way that we are going um and 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 the reason why i'm saying that is is for a number of co of course of of reasons uh, we don't have if you look around you, you don't have a full fledged telecom operator that that build the network uh, uh, over uh, a cloud and 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 here in this case i, I believe faro was uh, referring to a public uh, cloud uh, with the with the hyperscalers and you put your network functions with the, in aws or in azure or etc so so there is no much of references uh, um, the maturity itself of the network functions to set on the cloud. So we still have some challenges with some of the vendors. I mean, not all the vendors today support the deployment of the cloud in an uh, open uh, source uh, uh, community and, and uh, I mean, uh, an open model. Uh, so there are some vendors who restrict the, the the functionality uh, of their the, the network functions that they own uh, and they would like it to be a full uh, vertical and it, and it has to be supplied from from them so this is also add to the complexity and usually networks are not built from one vendor so there is a number of uh, suppliers some of them are flexible open and and eager to go into the the cloud some of them are still putting some restriction. So that's also another thing. And the third thing, maybe uh, the, the, the point that I talked about, the uh, network functionality, there is a lot of uh, um, uh, um, information that, that uh, touches the customer, the location of the customer, the, the address, the, the so many information that in a number of countries and a number of regulations, they don't allow you to post all of this uh, uh, information in a public cloud. It has to be secure. It has to be private. It has to be so. So a number of uh, you know of reasons why do I think that I wouldn't bet a complete tra a transformation of my network uh, and, uh, to to trust and to put it on the cloud. I will okay. maybe maybe if you ask me this in five years or maybe three years, maybe I would answer different. Okay, thank you, Hatem. Let's go to more questions because the question number three was how important is network 
uh, for business readiness here when they when using the cloud. I will ask the uh, the question. This question to Georgia, then please. Yes. Um, first, we are uh, regarding also the network adoption. We're seeing uh, many global players now setting footprint in our region. For example, you have Oracle now that has a full-fledged operation in uh, Saudi Arabia. The same goes for SAP. We know that also Microsoft Azure is setting up a uh, lot of pops and presence in the Gulf and hopefully soon in Saudi Arabia. Uh, AWS is already in Bahrain. So we have a lot of uh, these big cloud players moving into the region. So the question is about the network uh, now specifically, uh, Tony. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's how adoption of the cloud in the region and how important the network readiness yeah. to, uh, to adopt okay. the cloud. So for, for the network is uh, very crucial because all these cloud entities or any cloud deployment needs very uh, much redundant international connectivity. So uh, this is driving also uh, demand for international connectivity in a redundant fashion on multiple submarine cables on multiple backhauls, uh, no single point of failure. Also, the, the cloud needs to access the end user, so whether it's a B2B government or, uh, or a consumer. So it's the last mile, the fiber to the home deployments, the fiber to the business, the 5G. Because when we talk about the cloud, it's also about, uh, you know, the most important part is the response time for the end user. You're, you're, whether you're an employee of a company accessing your email or an application, or you're a consumer accessing, for example, a major retail store, it's very important that you have secure, reliable connectivity. And this cloud also should be, you know, duplicated across many instances, whether in the same country or globally. Thank you, George. Yes. Uh, Omar, can we have your opinion uh, about the network readiness from Bandar uh, opinion, please? Yeah, definitely, Tony. And uh, first of all, I need to re-emphasize on a very important aspect. Uh, cloud is not one deployment model, by the way. So uh, uh, the concept of distributed multi-cloud is uh, dominating nowadays and being able to offer customers different deployment models is extremely important because tomorrow when you're delivering a digital service, and this is important back to Mr. Ahmed Farrukh's question, when, when you're deploying any AI application scenario moving forward to accelerate digital transformation, take a smart city, safe city, and many other examples, you will have to have probably a software defined camera connected to an intelligent edge, connected to a core cloud. So you will have to have different cloud deployments. Not every service is gonna run a pub on a public cloud. We're gonna see services running across a distributed cloud model, just to re-emphasize this aspect. Now, when it comes to uh, the network and most importantly, you've asked before about the adoption in the region, First of all, Tony, it's important to highlight that key countries in the Middle East and primarily Saudi and UAE are pioneers in adopting cloud-first policy and are attracting global hyperscalers, by the way, to deploy cloud availability zones, if you want to call it, in, uh, in the relevant countries. And we are also one of the hyperscalers who are proud to say that we've launched our cloud uh, through three availability zones in UAE, and we are very soon going to announce our cloud uh, nodes uh, in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. We believe the cloud opportunity is growing significantly in the region. In fact, cloud is growing double digit in the Middle East and is expected to grow uh, for many years to come. Uh, we are expecting actually the public cloud market in 2021 to exceed $1.3 billion in the key countries in the Middle East region. And we've also seen regulators, especially with the maturity of cybersecurity uh, cloud deployments are becoming even more flexible in supporting the cloudification of key workloads. Having said that, what you've mentioned about network is very important. Uh, to realize digital transformation, and especially after the pandemic, the need for more reliable next generation networks becomes more important than any time before. And this is why, for example, in Huawei, we are working to accelerate the adoption of 5G. And over the past uh, couple of months, we have worked very hard to help all the countries in the Middle East to speed up the deployment of 5G networks and to guarantee the network quality. And in fact, we've worked with carriers and industry partners worldwide to explore the application of 5G in more than 300 projects spanning over more than 20 industries. 
So yes, those concepts complement each other. We are seeing major demand in the Middle East, and we strongly believe that next generation network plays a major role in enabling cloud deployments and cloud adoption. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Omar. I will take one question from the audience participant before we, we continue. I have another question for Omar Farouk, for Ahmed Farouk. Uh, a question is for Haisam. So Haisam, what about the cloud security and regulatory requirement on hosting in a country? Well, and I think when we look into the security, there were different schools that, uh, that thought of this cloud. People think that there's one school that think that, you know, the open source and, you know, the, the cloud architecture will really uh, probably fasten uh, and, and uh, provide much more capability to add the security uh, aspects. So you will be part of a complete, I would say, community that address security issues. And there are definitely other parts uh, that looks into uh, cloud as a risk. But at the end of the day, there are multiple deployments approach, architectural uh, uh, methodology where you want to go into, into especially now and the security aspects will, will probably might be more risky if you want to go and you run your workload and off premises. And I think each organization really that looked and there are best practices, by the way, around cloud deployments around security that organization need to follow. Cybersecurity at it, uh, at large is is uh, is representing a, a critical risk, you know, either on premises or off premises. So the maturity of of um, of, of data protection and cybersecurity will play a major role, and and this applies across you know the technology and uh, across multiple uh, dimensions uh, on the business. Thank you, Hassan. Hassan, I will stay with you for another question from us. In addition to the cloud, we know that 5G artificial intelligence are playing an important role to accelerate the digital transformation. What is your take on this? I mean, there are there are a, a status quo on 5G, and there is the future. I would say promises on 5G, and um, when we when we look into uh, you know what 5G is promising in the future, with you know with looking into the 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 uh, you know. The latency and and uh, reliability, I would say, uh, uh, promises of, of the 5G. There are a lot of potential, I would say, use cases, and there are characteristics of the 5G that should enable the creation of a lot of innovative services. But I think this is will be will be not something that probably uh, that we need to deal with 5G is not the way that we have been doing with, uh, especially in the telco domain, with what we used to do, to do in the past and in our probably a product development life cycle. In 5G, there will be much more collaboration that we probably can take with our customers and try to address what are the business problems across multiple industries that we need really to work on it. And there's no predefined you know, services that we can estimate in the future. It's the, it's the innovation uh, framework that we have to design. It's the proactiveness, it's the partnership ecosystem that we need to take with our customers or our partner to unleash the potential of the 5G capabilities. Thank you, Haitham. Uh, Omar, uh, I want your opinion on this also. Unmute. Omar, unmute. You are I mute? Know, I think Sarah had a problem, but a little connection. Maybe you can Tony, sorry. Okay, I said same, same answer in addition to the cloud 5G and artificial intelligence playing important yeah, role to yeah. accelerate the digital transformation. Yeah. What is your take on this? So uh, first of all, Tony, digital technologies, in my opinion, primarily 5G, artificial intelligence, coupled with analytics are definitely key cornerstones of any digital transformation. In fact, uh, in Huawei, for example, we've geared our entire R&D spending towards 5G cloud and AI, and we've built even a reference architecture for digital transformation using these technologies. As these technologies do not operate independently, or independently of each other, but rather they build on and reinforce uh, each other. So together they they are they they can enable the organizational plasticity that will help organizations 
uh, or that will guide organizations uh, in, uh, for many years to come. Now, the move towards 5G is definitely enabling substantial transformation for the telecommunication industry in specific, while also unlocking opportunities across numerous sectors, uh, such as the financial services, the healthcare, uh, the education, manufacturing, government, and, and, and much more, especially as we fight to overcome the effects of the COVID-19. And in addition, uh, 5G is actually the network that will connect the peripherals, the devices, the intelligent edge with the core cloud hub. And AI, coupled with digital technologies like analytics, will enable the next generation services and industry specific apps which of course will accelerate the digital transformation so we currently for example deliver ai application scenarios on top of our cloud for all industries we're delivering safe and smart city smart hospital platforms smart energy digital finance and and, and many others and we use cloud to enable the distributed deployment that I've referred to before of those application scenarios and 5G to connect the distributed deployments together. Thank you, thank you, Omar. Uh, Annette, do you want to uh, comment on this, uh, the cloud technologies which uh, 5G artificial intelligence? I made already a few comments earlier around 5G and the use cases. So what we are doing uh, in Colt is that we currently analyze what are um, associated use cases, especially getting back to what Hartem said for private 5G uh, network deployments. And uh, we also look at artificial intelligence as an enabler to enhance among others, the performance of our own network to increase the user experience, the customer experience with our network. Um, but also, I believe a topic which we definitely need to take into consideration as operators is we collect so many data. How can we move from just collecting the data to analyzing them and then monetizing them? Because probably in the future, um, data um, is our currency, is our asset as an operator, not necessarily um, the network as such or the connectivity as such but the, the data which uh, we accumulate and analyze properly. Having said that, I want to bring some tangible examples to what we are doing. Um, we are currently using um, artificial intelligence, for instance, um, to do capacity planning for our own network capacity. What are we doing there? We are combining basically data collected from the network usage as such, which is a regular thing, but we combine it with uh, harvesting and data mining about the propensity of our clients to upgrade capacity or to introduce even new services. And then targetly we address those client groups. Or for instance, another application which is very relevant when we talk about uh, cloud-based voice services, for instance, is that we um, analyze with the help of artificial intelligence analyze anomaly, an, anomalies sorry, in, in conference calls in order to correct them automatically and directly without any human behavior. And this is, I call it, the sparrow in our hand. And what you have described, Omar, earlier is definitely um, the duff on the roof. This is what we aspire. But I believe artificial intelligence is there already today to help us as operator in uh, automating uh, and increase the automation in our networks. And if we combine it then in the future also with very solid use cases for uh, 5G, then data monetization is probably the next step for us to look seriously uh, at. This Thank is you. combined with Thank the... You the partner ecosphere system, Tony, what uh, we touched earlier. Sorry. <laughs> no problem. Thank you, Annette. Uh, now, uh, because we have a question from the participants of the audience, we'll leave the question because I have last question is very important. I want to hear from all of you, in fact. What are the most important new technologies that the carrier are adopting to accelerate new technologies? You know, we have many technologies now available. Which one? I will start with George Jaber. Yeah. And then everyone will take, please, this answer for this question. 
So the most important technology is uh, first the rollout of more and more fiber to improve the last mile connectivity for end users, the rollout of 5G. So also as ITC, we're now starting our journey into the 5G. You'll hear about it uh, a lot in 2021, hopefully. Uh, cloud computing, uh, also uh, the operators and the technologies with, uh, for digital transformation should be the improvement of cloud computing uh, technologies. So also as operators, we are investing more and more in our own cloud computing capabilities, plus in giving our customers access to Oracle, to Microsoft Azure, no, to no, AWS. Please. Enough you promote ITC, don't promote other vendor, please. Yeah. You have to pay, Security. George, I will charge you. Yeah. We had Security. Oracle numbers. They, they, they talk very well about themselves. <laughs> now my, my, my question also to Haisam, please, Haisam. It's okay about technology, not about brand. Yeah. So I think I'm, I'm, I'm going to call it, uh, Tony, is, is the trends. I think the trends are towards uh, AI and machine learning. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> advanced uh, advance, uh, data monetization capability. We also have to look into IoT. IoT, I think, with the Industry 4.0 and, you know, the new data economy, I think IoT definitely will be getting the focus speci specifically, especially from the service provider. And the most important that touches every, every uh, probably dimension of the digital transformation is, is around cybersecurity and, and the importance of data governance, data protection and, and, those, and those aspects. And I believe that those will be the important uh, pillars uh, that will be focused on. Thank you, Haitham. Uh, Hatton. Unmute. Yeah, sorry. So maybe to answer this question is that uh, maybe I will just emphasize uh, that we are now witnessing a new industrial revolution, which is uh, uh, basically a combination of a number of technologies. And we believe that the role of the telecommunication, and this is what we are trying to position ourselves is that we will be an enabler and an accelerator towards the fourth industrial revolution. So it's a number of technologies, uh, uh, Tony. It's not uh, 5G or IoT. We are also um, uh, building a complete uh, virtualization platform and a virtualization journey for all of our network functions. We are building edge uh, a cloud. Uh, um, we are building also some specific use cases over these uh, uh, edge uh, uh, platforms. IoT will play a major role. So we have also to enable the infrastructure and the application layer to be uh, uh, ready for the IoT uh, 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 sensors and IoT devices. Uh, so it's, it's a number and a combination of technologies. Of course, 5G, it's in the core of all of this, what, what I mentioned. Uh, okay. So I, I believe that this is, uh, you know, yeah, the deployment and the consideration of those number of technologies is the fourth industrial revolution that uh, service providers have to take a major role in. Thank you. Uh, Omar, it's you now. The major technologies that carriers should adopt to accelerate the digital transformation. يعني أخ توني أنا after all the experts يعني what do I have to say? But no, maybe you make the list. The brief. In a nutshell, in a nutshell, first of all, when we look at the priority, the priority is accelerating digital transformation, and for service providers, digital transformation resembles very much the human body, whereby. The peripherals are basically the intelligent edge, uh, the intelligent devices. Uh, we're seeing plenty of software-defined cameras and robots and uh, intelligent edge are being utilized in many application scenarios. And the connectivity, the arms and legs are basically 5G and Wi-Fi 6 and other technologies. And we're seeing the core of the body being the cloud. And again, cloud with the choice of deployment and the brain is artificial intelligence and analytics. And I strongly believe that these are the key pillars that are a top priority on the agenda of service providers. And of, co of course, on 
uh, the agenda of uh, all other enterprises nowadays. So I can summarize it and uh, the IoT, as mentioned by Abu Badr, Mr. Haytham, coupled with 5G technologies, coupled with core cloud deployment, and of course, with the horizontal digital platform, while capitalizing on AI, machine learning, and of course, enterprise analytics. Thank you. Thank you, Omar. Annette, uh, floor is you I for would, your question also. I would like to bring a completely different aspect on top of what has been said oh, earlier. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, because we know telecoms is a lot about technology, but uh, we should approach it from a customer-centric perspective. And the additional aspect I want to bring to the equation is how well do we listen to the digitization aspirations in other industries and the role of a partnership ecosystem in order to really understand what do our customers want to buy from us in, in the future? They really don't care about the underlying technology. They just care about their problems being solved and the associated use cases being properly addressed. And that's something which we should not forget with all technology aspirations, because at the end of the day, we will only differentiate in the eyes of the customer by how well we are going to address their requirements. And technology is going to be replaceable, uh, especially given the strong trend for open source based uh, applications. Thank you, Annette. Now I will go to the question also. Okay, we have question for Madia Abahi. Question to Omar. Did we reach a stage where we can launch a MVM fully on the cloud? What is Huawei's prediction on the impact of cloud deployment on data centers? I guess this is also an important question. You mute, uh, Omar. Kitambul, you've left all the difficult questions to me. Uh, Ahmed came and asked the easy questions, and then, <laughs> anyway, in a nutshell. So Ahmed didn't ask you, you command. He asked Kaisam and Hatem. <laughs> so the first questions were you, okay? <laughs> yeah. In a nutshell, uh, I'm not sure I understood exactly what he means by the question, but we've seen. Uh, Can you deploy uh, fully MVM? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I read now the question. We've seen that uh, a lot of providers have capitalized and have built MVNOs on the cloud already uh, in order to, uh, to minimize the upfront hardware investment and so that they can have the, uh, uh, the flexible scalability or uh, the on-demand scalability uh, based, on, uh, based on customer requests. Uh, uh, and we've seen MVNOs are already uh, can, can leverage the, the highly available physical infrastructure that has redundancy across many availability zones um, and can be deployed in a matter of uh, hours to different regions around the world to serve different customers globally. So can, can we go with MVNOs on the cloud? I probably leave it for the experts to comment, but from my perspective, we've been seeing this for quite a while whereby lots of providers are going with MVNOs uh, uh, on the cloud in specific. What's the impact of cloud on data center? So a very exciting, so it has two aspects, by the way. We're seeing the, the service providers are investing on state-of-the-art data centers across the globe to deliver a cloud services closer to their customers. Uh, and at the same time, we're seeing customers now across even the enterprise are moving away from having their own data centers. In fact, in many discussions uh, with plenty of our customers in the enterprise market segment, I was even talking to banks and some of them were saying, we are proud to say that we're going data center less in a couple of months down the line. So from a customer perspective, customer is more prone today to move more services to the cloud. We're seeing customers are aiming to have a data centerless strategy from an IT perspective in the very near future. But on the contrary, we're seeing um, uh, hyperscalers, cloud providers, service providers in countries are basically building state-of-the-art data centers to deliver 
uh, next generation cloud services closer to their customers uh, at any point in time and anywhere. Thank you. Thank you, Omar. I will go now to question from Dr. Nadine Akkari. I'm very glad to hear from you, Doctor. Dr. Nadine was always an active speaker in our summit. And she was the associate professor in King Abdul Aziz University in Jeddah, in Kingdom, my son. Uh, as we cannot ignore the pandemic still threatening all sectors, in what ways did COVID influence cloud deployment and digital transformation? Uh, Haysam, can you take this, please? I think, I think the COVID, um, with all of the consequences that we have seen for the past six, seven months, it will, um, it will accelerate definitely the moves towards digital transformation, which I would assume definitely the, the adoption of the cloud, either from an end user perspective, will be much more uh, accelerated. In the past, customers were very much um, probably hesitant really to, to adopt uh, the cloud approach in, in, uh, in, in, uh, in uh, providing and supporting the launch of their products and services. But definitely COVID, it will have um, a positive impact and acceleration across all dimensions of digital transformation because the amount of economic campaigns that different industries and companies have faced during COVID will definitely will open, uh, I would say, uh, a new stream of business continuity that looks into, you know, how we deal probably with future uh, pandemics of things that happens in the, in the future as we care in the past with the uh, physical damages and, uh, and uh, environmental issues, we'll definitely have to look into what might come in the future uh, against these kind of, uh, you know, uh, circumstances. And definitely the cloud will be an enabler really to mitigate such risk. Thank you, Haitham. We'll go to one more question from Jeff Seal. Jeff is the managing uh, partner of Telecom Review in North America. Uh, many of you know Jeff. Okay, uh, to to add the question, with digital transformation dependency on the cloud in many areas of the world, we need the redundancy to ensure the integrity of the application running on the cloud. Failure of the cloud can cause unprecedented failure that affects people at many levels. For instance, the Google failure affected people being able to use their Nest Hub door lock feature locking down their property. How we can get this? Oh, and private cloud to build more redundancy in the system. Jeff, thank you. Really, very, very important. We're already suffering now, even with the connectivity today because of this. Okay, uh, Aned and Omar, can you please answer Jeff on this? We we'll start by Aned, please. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, it's all about redundancy. You are absolutely right. I mean, if you look at the networks, if you look at uh, your ability as an operator to provide um, multi-cloud access, which is in, which includes increases uh, the the level of redundancy, of course, which includes also dedicated access to the clouds in different hybrid environments. This is one way or the other how you can you know support this, but it also. Um, it depends on the redundancy in your network, the resilience of your network, which is uh, significantly impacting um, also or mitigating this risk what you are describing. Um, I don't, Tony told me not to advertise Colt, that's why I stopped uh, sharing. Uh, no, Colt is okay, but he's <laughs> advertising your other company. We advertise Colt, we put Colt everywhere. For the speaker, it's no problem. <laughs> no, no, I just, I just wanted but to make he's making the list, the wish list of his customer. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I wanted to say is, um, for instance, it's called, uh, we address more than 90% of uh, all the cloud market across the world via different uh, pop accesses uh, throughout the world via being uh, present on marketplaces like on Equinix, DRT, Interaction, etc. And this is another way of um, um, assuring um, that um, you provide a specific redundancy to your clients, which mitigates the risks. Okay, thank you. Omar, uh, please, can you comment? Yes, definitely. So I, I totally agree with the question. Today, uh, the most important aspect when moving the cloud is all about uh, resiliency, availability, and security. Uh, and how can we basically 
uh, meet the target SLAs of enterprises uh, on the cloud. And, and that's very important. Today, we're looking at that very seriously when building the availability zones across the globe. And in fact, whenever we're delivering a cloud service, we're trying to diversify the deployment model. We're trying- oh, The diversification is the key, I guess, here, because when you're, when you, when 90% of people are, are focusing on Google and Google is failure, and everything works, application, you lock your house, as, as Jeff said, by mobile. So diversity is the key now, the solution. You cannot yeah. make a Google uh, globalization and you don't yeah. have other choice. Yeah. So first of all, I agree with you. It's today we're living in an era of multi-cloud whereby the users are going to broker services from different public cloud providers. And the key aspect is number one, to maintain a unified user experience across the different deployments of clouds. That's very important. And this is one of the areas that we're looking at seriously and we can address it in a very efficient manner. The other aspect, even within the same cloud service provider, if you take, for example, what we deliver today in UAE, we deliver cloud services through three data centers and we can go up to, for example, from a business continuity perspective, an active, active, passive operating model. So what we try to do is we're trying to offer the same levels of SLAs in terms of availability, in terms of security, the multi-layer defense and depth security solutions and resiliency within the cloud nodes that we're de deploying across the globe. And uh, that's why today, um, um, for example, and I'm, I'm not trying to, to market Huawei, but it's just to give an example. Today on Huawei clouds, we have more than uh, 350 uh, governments, for example, e-governments, and more than 200 financial institutions. And as you know that the requirements of government and financial institutions from a security compliance availability perspective is very aggressive. So yes, I agree. Uh, today clouds uh, should scale to deliver enterprise class services that can meet any target SLA that you can achieve on-prem. And today, the majority of the hyperscalers are basically moving more into the enterprise market segment by delivering uh, multiple deployment models, by delivering the same availability and security that basically enterprises tend to implement on-prem. So, so cloud is maturing as we move forward to become more suitable for the enterprise market segment. Thank you, thank you, Omar. And now, just I have comment from uh, Alain Prabhupti. He said, Rakuten Mobile launched a cloud and VNO lately and is looking to be successful so far. Thank you, Alan. this is noted. Okay, we'll go to one more question. What are the challenges of cloud adoption in Middle East and Europe? And what needs to be done to overcome them? This question by Christine Ziede, our telecom review content manager. So, I guess, Kenneth, you start with uh, answering the Europe, and then Haitham and Hatem and George maybe will go over the answers about the Middle East. And what, um, Tony, you want me to start, correct? Sorry? Yes, Do you want, you want me to, to start answering the question, sorry? Yes, yes. Oh, okay, sorry. I had a network issue. Yeah, I think the, the challenges of cloud adoption in, in Europe specifically, we referred to it earlier. And uh, those are predominantly security concerns. These are regulatory, um, 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 let's say, limitations. Um, but um, the, the pro most prominent one is uh, around the, um, the, the the perception of the on-ramp versus uh, on-prem on versus um, cloud-based uh, performance of the systems. Um, but having said that uh, earlier, you know, with the positive experiences during the uh, COVID, the first phase of uh, COVID-19, um, I believe, and this is what we are seeing now from the market, there is a higher increase and a higher pull for uh, migration projects into the cloud. Having said that as well, I also believe um, that um, the uh, um, clients who are looking for cloud migration projects, they also suffer from a certain level of 
insecurity and uncertainty about how to tackle and how to manage those migration projects. The more important is um, to have an ecosystem of players who best in breed, best case, consult, uh, project manage, and also provide the necessary infrastructure for the cloud migration. And uh, the education of our clients is very much in the focus and the challenge which uh, is the same or similar in the Middle East. Thank you. Uh, Hassan, please. Yes, the so in in uh, in a nutshell, in order to uh, accelerate. So what we are actually seeing here in the in the Middle East and the region, some of the advanced market because you understand the Middle East has uh, some emerging markets and some advanced markets, and so what we are seeing is that the cloud adoption is actually a race between a number of providers to offer cloud proposition uh, to, the, uh, to the end users. So uh, we've seen the rush, and this explains the rush of the AWS and the Microsoft and, and the rest that establishing presence in the region. This explains why, because the, uh, what we are seeing is that the, the, the region is very much hungry, especially those advanced market is hungry for cloud uh, uh, adoption because uh, as I said, there is so much productivity that you can add to your uh, business, to the way that you carry out your, your business and your operation, if you deploy some of the activities towards the cloud. Um, we, uh, in the Salat, for, for instance, we have signed a partnership uh, uh, with Microsoft Azure to utilize... Uh, again, again happened. Yeah, Who's no, you can call vendor. Yeah, okay, okay. One okay, of the better you, story, but <laughs> they should pay me then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but we have signed no, the, the point that I would like to make it's it's regardless of the, <laughs> the vendor, but it's that the, we are open, we believe that alliances and partnership is an important step towards the accelerating the adoption. And you don't wait until you build a full-fledged cloud infrastructure and a cloud platform. You need to sign these kind of agreements and alliances with some of the hyperscalers. And this is uh, what we are seeing across the entire world. And in North America, Verizon, for example, have started this uh, a long time in Europe also. So we've, we've seen that kind of uh, uh, model adopted by us. So, this is what I believe and it will, it will accelerate, uh, that, that you need to, to be open to sign, a, 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 to, to basically go into alliances and partnership with some of those hyperscalers. Thank you, thank you. I, uh, can, I, can I just uh, add? Yes, can Anna, I would like to comment, I'm oh, sorry. Later, hi Sam. Any, anything you want to add? Well, like I, I, mean, I can't agree more of what has been mentioned in terms of, you know, uh, the importance of um, establishing that partnership and, and that, that ecosystem, specifically for service provider who are looking for diversifications and they create um, an innovation and environment and culture really to promote uh, advanced services really to... So and I think what the, 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 with Anit and with Hatim have mentioned, I completely agree. Thank you. Uh, George, uh, it's yours now. Yes. You can take all the floor. Not only no, no, just for the Middle East, I believe uh, in our, what I realize here in at least from our side, the culture of the companies needs to be changed to become more towards the cloud and moving the appeal of the cloud. And always there's the challenge within organizations of buy versus build. We always have to do this exercise. Should we, they go to the cloud or should they do uh, their applications still on premise? That's this is what I believe. Or, Thank yeah. you very much. Omar, please. Yeah, and from my perspective, uh, we've seen a lot that the key challenges are number one, security and compliance. When you go to the customer, he is ready to move to the cloud. Uh, but the first question that comes to his mind is, what about security? Are you compliant with the global regulatory requirements, ISO and GDPR and PCI DSS and many others? So we're seeing that the number one barrier is, uh, is the, what, what was mentioned at the beginning by Mr. Haytham, it's the cybersecurity, the security aspect. 
Um, and the number two, which is extremely important, uh, is the cloudification of workload. How can you work with customers on the proper methodology to move workloads seamlessly to the cloud? That's also another important aspect that has to be taken into account to facilitate cloud, uh, to facilitate the move uh, to the cloud, in my opinion. Thank you, Omar. I would like to thank you, all of you. Thank you for our speakers. And we're sorry for the connectivity issues, okay, which is not in our hand, not in your hand. Also, I would like also to really apologize from our participants, but because we received a lot of complaints, they cannot connect. So it seems a big issue today. I don't know what, it seems Zoom, they are using uh, some Google services. I'm sure of this because it didn't happen before like this. So really, I would like to thank you and apologize, but uh, be sure that next week, our digital newsletter have enough thousands of database. So we'll reach everyone with the outcome of your expertise. And this is, and at the end, this is our, well, our goal and objective from this is to go over to more from your, take your expertise to the public of the ICT. Thank you very much. Thank you.